And I think I had been concerned as early as March 2020 that there were, I'd say, generally underappreciated risks associated with attending even medium to small events. Cases were spreading. It was hard to figure out how many cases there really were. There were all these questions of whether or not the cases were being documented, and we were fairly certain they were under-ascertained, under-documented. And we wanted to translate that in some way to communicate that out to the world. Uh, so one of the big things that we focus on is creating uh, like interactive interfaces around not just like bioinformatics tools, but also say public health related things. Um, so our Shiny is really a great tool for this. I put out a tweet which tried to highlight this relationship between how big an event was, and how many people might be infected, where there was uncertainty and highlighting the risk that one or more individuals in a group of that size at that moment might be infected, leading to obviously potential risk for spread. This went in its own way viral and spread very rapidly. I think people started to realize that this was a, a compelling communication tool. Think about who your audience is gonna be, um, absolutely. And don't, don't think about like, oh, I would find this cool, so other people would find it cool too. So we had to take all of those different individual data sets and some of those listed cumulative cases, some of them listed daily cases, and we had to make sure that was all formatted correctly. The balancing between how straight, the straightforwardness of our app and the, the number of information or selectable variables in our app was one of the most discussed topic in our discussions, I think. We just want to focus what is the most important things and to present information for the users. We don't need something like very big, very fancy, but like something very essential. I mean, theoretically, it would be better if we have more options, uh, but we need to limit that um, number of options to make the speed or um, the usability of the app good enough. So I think we ended up have, um, having keeping only two user variables. Um, one was the size of the event and one other was the assertion bias which can vary across the different um, locales. We originally were thinking about data applied to Georgia as the state and uh, at that same kind of time this uh, mapping project was taking off. We launched a state level thing in May without the visualization and it's really the visualization that that we worked so hard on with Clio and Soha that when that was released, in that day, it was very clear. I had some expectation it would spread, but this was, it went much faster. That's in part because it started to spread on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and started to go through social media sites. And that really was this kind of stepping stone into this project uh, where we uh, then applied that concept to other countries in Europe. This particular metric, I think, is something that people can really get grips on and understand a lot more easily than some of the other ones, like cases per 100,000 people. I mean, I don't even know uh, how big a group, 100,000 people, how much space they would take up. It's very hard to visualize and think about. Communicate risk at a personal level, right? That people get what it means to be at a restaurant with 50 people. They're not sure what to always do with a, a positivity rate or case rates that are cumulative because that's not the, necessarily the relevant risk at that moment. Making sure that as developers, you have a question in mind. And I think that requires taking a bit of an empathetic perspective with respect to your potential users. It wasn't meant to be complicated, it was meant to be accessible and trying to take simple quantitative principles in the midst of the pandemic and letting them uh, be uh, utilized in this really this kind of public accessible format.